Okay, this is lecture 25 in ZOO 3649 Evolutionary Genetics, and we're talking today about phylogenies. Okay, we've already ascertained how we use traits to build trees to show who's most closely related to whom, but also that you can't use any trait to build a tree. You have to use a homologous trait. Okay, a trait that is share that is coming through common ancestry okay so now let's get on with what is a phylogeny we know now what traits we can use to build these now we want to get into details of what the what a phylogeny is so how can we go from the level of an individual to the level of a phylogeny a phylogeny basically or a tree basically shows the evolutionary relationships between different species Okay, so how do we go from individuals to phylogenies? Well, a phylogeny is basically a diagram, a tree. It's a diagram. And what is it showing you? It shows you lines of evolutionary descent, okay, of different species, different organisms, or different genes even from a common ancestor. Okay, so how do we get from individuals to phylogenies. You see, we have these four butterflies here. You see where my mouse is? Oh, sorry, my, my picture, <laughs> I see my picture is in the way. There are not three butterflies. Let me try and move that for the moment. Yeah, okay. So you see there that there are four butterflies, okay? So how, how are these four butterflies related in the grand scheme of things to the rest of their species and to other species? Well, these four butterflies, okay, here they are, the four, are related in the previous generation to who? Their parents, obviously, right? So here is, are the four butterflies, and here are their parents. You can see that these two butterflies mated to give this one, and these two mated to give these three here, okay? So these four butterflies are descended from their parents, okay? So that's the first tracking back the line of descent from an individual to its parents okay and then what those parents here they are in the second row here of this image those parents are connected to their parents right and their parents connected to their parents and so on so basically the whole population is connected going back in time then how are is this population here connected to other populations and if you zoom out of this population you see it's only that part of you see these black lines they are the lines of descent okay they are the lines of um, ancestry showing the lines of descent that darwin was talking about the lines of descent you see and so this population if you zoom out is actually part of many other populations okay and many other lines of descent and you can see then that this is collected this population is connected to a whole group of populations and this group of populations if you zoom out further is connected to the entire species okay so this tiny this bit here is just this little rectangle here and look how many other such are there in this species, okay? And then if you zoom out from here, from this part, to see how are all of these lines of descent related to other lines of descent, okay? Finally, you get to this level here, which is the tree, okay? And you can see how this species here is related to this species and this species and this species okay so we've gone and these four individuals belong where on the tree they belong right at the very tip of the tree there okay all we have done to go from individual to species is to zoom out and zoom out and zoom out and zoom out okay so that's how a phylogeny looks in real life okay so when you see a tree like this if you see a tree with species a b and c 
you're thinking, Aish, Marre, how is that relating to the actual individuals? This is how, okay? This is how they relate through thousands, millions of lines, tiny little individual lines of descent until you get to the present day and individuals in the present day. Okay, so how do we understand a phylogeny? How do we understand how uh, phylogenies are arranged? So uh, it's important. Okay, oopsie. Let me move my let me move my <laughs> um, picture back. Okay. So how do we understand phylogenies? Phylogenies are arranged arranged along an axis from the root to the tip. Okay. So in reality, okay, the phylogenies are made up of as as you've seen from the previous slide thousands of lines of descent these little lines here okay thousands of them okay and now we zoom out we are in this part of the tree the ancestral part of the tree okay so the phylogeny okay is basically made out of this root from this root this is the root here where the ancestor lived, and here are the tips, one, two, three, four tips, okay? So the root of the phylogeny represents the common ancestor. And remember, the phylogeny is not just these four A, B, C, and D. Remember, inside A, there are hundreds of individuals. Inside B, there are also hundreds, and they all have these, what? These millions of little lines of descent, okay? like you saw from the last slide okay it's inside it's running millions of little lines of descent from one generation to the next until the very until the very present day which is the, the which is the present day which is the time now of the present as opposed to going back down the tree to the time of the ancestor okay so the tips of the tree are four species a b c and d now the true evolutionary history this middle one here okay shows this is the true evolutionary history of species a b c and d okay so what can we we can if we took a sample of a genes from a b c and d and we made a tree would we get this tree here we would not we would get a similar tree but we would not get this exact tree we would get what? We would get this tree here, okay? If we took genes from A, this one here, A, B, C, and D, we would get this tree here, A, B, C, D, which shows you that A is most closely related to B, the same as here, A is most closely related to B, and shows you that C is most closely related to D. Same here, C is most closely related to D. So this tree and this tree are very similar. In fact, they're almost the same, right? But I want you to tell me what are the differences between these two trees, the tree, this tree here and this tree here, even though they are almost the same. What is this tree? Give, this tree is the true tree and is giving us some more information, right? What is it giving us? It's telling us that in the past, it wasn't just A, B, and C. We had also one, two, three different species so maybe species e f and g okay but in this tree we don't have any record of those e f and g nothing they're not there why are they not there why because we only took samples from a b c and d to make this tree so the samples from a b c and d do not have any information telling you that these guys, E, F, and G, existed at all. Okay? So if we collect samples from the present day and we make a tree, we will never be able to tell what other species were wandering around during the time before the present. Because it's not just A, B, and C that were around back in the old days. It was A, B, C, plus these other ones. But if we only take samples from A, B, and C in the present day and reconstruct our tree, 
based on our homologous characters. We don't get any evidence, we don't get any um, clues that there were these others, one, two, three, species E, F, and G. We don't have any evidence for that from this tree. Okay? So the true phylogeny can be very different to the phylogeny we create from homologous traits. Okay? This is the phylogeny here that we have created. We have built it using our homologous traits. This one is the true phylogeny. Okay? And you see that it has more variation in this group than just these four species. Okay, and that is always the problem when you are constructing, making a, a tree from today's species. You don't, you, you will never figure out what was there in the old days. Was it only these species or were there more back in the day? You can't figure that out. Okay, so... How else can we read a phylogeny? Here's a phylogeny here, a, a, a phylogeny you see bacteria, birds, marsupials, and homo. So homo is basically us, humans, okay? And humans are mammals. And, and, and on this side, you could replace homo with cat, dog, rat, whatever, but it will still be correct because why? All of us are most closely related compared to marsupials which are also mammals, but remember, they're not mammals that give birth to live young. They give, they're mammals that give birth to immature young, and they have a pouch, right? And the, and the baby grows up in the pouch, right? So until it's, it's mature, and then it can come out of the pouch, right? So marsupials are pouch mammals, right? They're mammals, but they're not modern mammals like, like homo and like dogs and cats and so on and bats and, and rats, okay? So this tree... Partitions are two kinds of the modern mammals, which is us, dogs and cats, from marsupials. Okay, but we are still most closely related to, to each other compared to where? Compared to who? Birds, right? Birds are outside this group because birds are quite different to mammals. Okay, and each time you get a branching pattern, we call that part where the, the, the ancestor does this, splits into two. We call it a node. Okay, we call it a node. And uh, what else? This each time you have a, 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 a something that a, a node that splits into two and the two things are called what they call branches this is one branch and this is another branch and that's easy to remember right because it's the same for a tree you get two branches and in the tree as well you have a node they come together in a node and then they come together where at the root at the trunk of the tree right at the root so the tree all trees have a have should have a root so the first group, the first branch from the root to break away, okay, the first branch is always called the basal or ancestral group, okay? That's saying that the ancestor at this point in time, okay, would have looked like a bacteria, okay? This is the ancestral group, the first group, okay? And then all the other groups since the ancestral group are called the derived group. So that's because why all at this point onwards in the tree they all don't look like bacteria anymore they look different to bacteria they've become derived okay they've derived their own shape okay so this is why it's called the derived part of the tree okay so what about the orientation of the tree say i put made a tree like this okay and um and i and i and i made it and i, I rotated it like this has that changed? Has that change meant anything? Has the tree changed? It's the same tree, just one was like this, now it's like this. Eh? Or like this. Or like that. It doesn't change anything. Okay? You can move that tree around, it does not change anything. Okay? So, orientation of the phylogeny does not actually matter. Alright? But how about rotating the phylogeny? Okay? Let's let's consider this, okay? This node here, this node here, okay? Uh, we have a phylogeny of fish, amphibians, so the salamanders and frogs, turtles, reptiles, snakes, lizards, birds, crocodile, and mammals. So we want we are considering this node here. You see the arrows going like this, okay? Uh, I'm going to rotate this node, okay? 
you see now it's being rotated and there it is rotated so in the in the first one mammal was on this side right we've rotated it so now on this tree mammals are here right beside frogs in the old tree mammals were far away from frogs so now that we've rotated the phylogeny have we changed the meaning of this phylogeny i want to ask you have we changed the meaning N no we has not ch we have not changed the meaning the fact the just because we rotated it and now mammal is close to frog means nothing okay because we have not changed the meaning why am i telling you it means nothing let's take the distance and here I bring an important word, distance. The distance of a tree can be between two individual leaves. So these are the leaves of the tree here. Okay? These are the branches. These are the leaves. Like the leaf, the tree has a leaf right at the end. So these leaves, okay? If you take the distance between any two leaves, it should be unchanged. If you rotate the phylogeny let me show you what i mean before before we rotated here was frog and turtle they were quite close to each other right but what was the distance between the frog and the turtle okay the distance is that piece there plus that piece there plus that piece there plus that piece there okay if you add that piece plus that piece plus that piece plus that piece that gives you the distance between frog and turtle now we've rotated it here is frog here is turtle on the other side but have has that distance changed have a look here's take it again we that distance there plus that distance there plus this distance here is exactly the same as this distance here plus this distance here plus this distance here plus this distance here okay the distance has not changed at all that is why even though now before it was turtle close to frog and now it's mammal close to frog it's irrelevant it doesn't mean a thing okay so you can rotate a phylogeny and it doesn't mean a thing now what about these fancy terms monophyly paraphyly and polyphyly you've learned this for many years now and i'm not going to dwell on it right because you should know this already you can't be sitting in in second in first year and not know this right and i know that dr skuman has taught you this a lot so monophyletic means when all three uh individuals all three individuals you're interested in in are in the same what we call part of the tree in the same clade they all are joined together perfectly uh, and they all have a common ancestor together they are monophyletic all right now let's look at what happens if one of them is not the same species say for example in this species here we've got B and C which look we are which are the same species okay and B and C have this relationship but they also have a very close relationship with a but a is not part of the same species that we can say that the species is paraphyletic because it the one species does not occupy the entire clade it occupies only part of that clade okay and this word clade i'm using is to determine groups like this okay this is a clade when these three are linked in one relationship here is another clade okay here's another clade and so when you're paraphyletic not all the members of one species fit into there's another species in the same clade that's what it means by paraphyletic what does polyphyletic mean polyphyletic means you have one species but it occurs in different parts of the tree. It occurs in this clade, and the very same species occurs in this clade as well. So in this case, A, B, and D are one species, and A, B, 
are closely related here, but D is on the other side of the tree. In, in that case, you say that this species is polyphyletic. Okay? Simple. And here's the very same thing again, right? You have in orange, in sorry, in, in blue, purple, blue, D and E are monophyletic, okay? Uh, a and B are, uh, 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 are also monophyletic. So D and E are monophyletic. If D and E were a species, you would say they are monophyletic species. What about the orange species? Or the B and C are one species, okay? They are one species. But what would you say the species is? This species is par poly... No, this species is polyphyletic because B belongs to this clade and C belongs to another clade. So this species is polyphyletic. What if B, C, D, E were one species? If B, C, D, E were one species, what kind of species would it be? It would be a paraphyletic species because B, C, and D, and E are closely related. They're in the same clade. They're in the same clade. But they're not the only ones in this clade. Another species, A, is also in their clade. So they cannot have a monophyletic clade. They have a paraphyletic clade. Because one other species is belonging to their clade. All right. So that's, and so you can say anything that is most closely related, monophyletic, are sister taxa. A and B are sister taxa. C and D are sister taxa. And then these two clades, clade A, B, and clade C, D, E. So these two clades, this clade here and this clade here, are obviously also sister clades, as you see there. Clade C, D, E, and clade A, B are sister clades. Okay, so how, let's just take what we've learned there and do some very basic second year, uh, first year, second year level questions. Are reptiles monophyletic? So, in other words, when you can, can we put a can we put a box around all reptiles, and all of them come from the very same common ancestor with no others in there? Can we do that? Let's see. Okay. So, where are the reptiles in this tree? Uh, what is a reptile? Firstly, right? A frog is it a reptile? No, it is not. It's an amphibian. Turtle's a reptile? Yes, he has a turtle. So frog is not. So that's amphibians there. Turtle is a reptile. Tuatara is a reptile. Yes, lizard is a reptile. Crocodile is a reptile. Birds. Are birds reptiles? Hmm. Are birds reptiles? You, you are saying, those of you who actually deserve to be in third year zoology are saying, no way, prof. Birds, there's no way birds can be reptiles. Birds are birds. It's a, it's a different class, not class, it's class Aves, and reptiles are class Reptilia. So you're saying, no, 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 birds are not reptiles. Okay, fine. So let's make a box for reptiles. Okay, we made a box for the reptiles. Birds are not reptiles, so they're not in the box. So are reptiles monophyletic? And your answer is obviously, no, they are not. Because if they were monophyletic, this one would have to be included in the box like that. You see how the box has been ex become extended? If they were monophyletic, it would be like this. Okay, but birds are, but but reptiles are not monophyletic. They are like this. Okay, so reptiles are here, but in the very same clade, there's another kind of thing, a bird. So that monophyletic clade there does not hold true for reptiles. Reptiles are paraphyletic because they are their clade is not monophyletic it's including some other kind of organism okay so how about so reptiles are not monophyletic how about fish are fish monophyletic first what is a fish a shark is it a fish yes shark is a fish a barbel is a barbel a fish yes a barbel is a fish it's a coelacanth a fish there's a coelacanth here yes coelacanth is a fish are frogs fish no frogs are not fish okay frogs are amphibians so here are all the fishes, okay? From there, hagfish, lampreys, sharks, etc., to lungfish. All of these are fishes. So let's put a box around fish, okay? There's our box around fish. Is that, are they monophyletic? They cannot be monophyletic, right? Because if they are monophyletic, all of these guys here have to be included in there. So that the whole clade, which starts here, 
The whole clade can be monophyletic. But as you see, fish, they are not monophyletic. Okay? So fish are not a monophyletic clade. And because why? That clade also includes all the other vertebrates. They include the uh, um, amphibians, the reptiles, the birds, and the mammals. Okay? So if fish were had to be monophyletic, it would have to in be including all of these things here in this box have to become have to be reptile uh, fish okay and they are not so you can say that reptiles are also paraphyletic all right so the other thing uh, I wanted to uh, tell you about uh, with phylogenies is that there's there's you, you a tree needs a root okay in order to figure out the relationships uh, within the derived parts of the tree, you need to actually root it <clears throat> with what we call an outgroup. And this is very important, actually. Uh, outgroup allows you to determine where the node of the tree is, and it also enables you to tell how the in-group is related to each other. Okay? So to root a tree, we need what we call an outgroup or a very dear uh, ancestral part of the tree okay so we can have a rooted tree in which case um, say for example uh, we have a, a species a b and c species b and c are very closely related and then more distantly related is uh, species a okay and this is because species a diverged close to the root of the tree close to where the ancestor lives okay sorry if you don't have a root to the tree you will it will look like this so this is the very same tree because the distances the branch lengths are the same okay so this tree here in this tree is the same tree as that tree except it doesn't have a root we didn't use an outgroup to root the tree so we don't know who which of these a b or c is closest to the ancestor because the tree doesn't have an outgroup it's not rooted okay whereas with this tree you can tell immediately that ah taxon a is closest to the ancestor branches of soonest from the ancestral it's the ancestral branch okay but with an unrooted tree without an outgroup there's no way of telling which one branched first and which one which one branched ancestrally and which one branched in a more derived part of the tree okay what else can we say when we're reading say we're reading phylogeny well if you see a uh, um, um, polytomy a polytomy happens when you don't have a bifurcation a bifurcation is telling you what you have one ancestor and bi means what two right so like bicycle two wheels so so if you have a common ancestor it branches into two that is called a bifurcation that is a resolved node we call it a fully resolved node okay so we know exactly what happened in that point the ancestor split into two okay it's a bifurcation that's what we want to find in in phylogenies we want to find bifurcations what we don't want to find are polytomies polytomy happens when what we have a common ancestor and then it splits into three or four or five okay like this one for example all a b c and d and e all come from this common ancestor at one point okay so that all of them come from the same common ancestor so it's not like there's a bifurcation it's just only two then it, it's, it, in this case, it's many, okay? So this is a polytomy. You can call it a star phylogeny, but it's a polytomy, okay? Or a multifurcation, okay? Don't get confused. Polytomy and multiplication means same thing. But multifurcation is the, is the opposite of bifurcation, right? Bifurcation means it splits, ancestor splits into two. Multiplication means what? Multiplication means the ancestor splits into more than two, so three or more. Okay, so for example, 
in this phylogeny, so this phylogeny here, where all of them come from the one ancestor, is what we call an unresolved phylogeny. You cannot say anything about the relationships between A, B, C, D, and E. You can say nothing about the relationship. In fact, it's useless. Okay? It doesn't tell us anything. What about this phylogeny? What does it tell us? It's telling us something. It's partially resolved. Okay, why do we say partially resolved? You, to resolve it fully, it has to be bifurcating. Okay, so these two, you see B and D are sister taxa. They bifurcate here. So that part of the tree is resolved. Okay, this part of the tree, we know that A, C, and E are related to each other, but we don't know whether A is closely related to C and then related to E or whether C is closely related to E and then related to A, or A is really cl closely related to E and then to C. We don't know that. Because why? Here's a, a, another polytomy. All three of them are coming from exactly the same part of the tree, the same common ancestor. So we don't have a bifurcation here. Okay? So in order to be fully resolved, a tree has to have only bifurcations, no polytomies or multiplications. So that's why we call this one a partially resolved because why it has one bifurcation here but this part is not bifurcating okay so it's resolved here but it's not resolved here so we say it's partially resolved what about this one this is what you call this is what we all aim for a fully resolved bifurcating phylogeny and from this one you can see okay b and d is the same as there they're bifurcating here you have a bifurcation here you have a bifurcation for A and the ancestor of A and E split from C. And then here you have another bifurcation of splitting A and E. So this tells you what? It gives you the other relationship between these three. In this tree here, in this tree, you couldn't tell what was the relationship between these three, A, C, and E. But in this tree, it's fully resolved. You can see immediately, ah, C is the one that is not closely related to A and E. A and E are the sister taxa, and C is a bit more further related. But you see, at every point you have a bifurcation, you split into two. At every point of the tree, it splits only into two, not three, not more. Okay, that's a difference between. So you want bifurcations. When you're making a tree, you want bifurcations. You don't want this nonsense here, okay? Because it it doesn't tell you about what can a what can this tree tell you about the relationships? Nothing. What can this tree tell you about the relationships? Everything. Okay? That's why we always want a fully resolved bifurcating phylogeny okay what about branch lengths quickly okay look at look at branch lengths the length that means the distance along the branch let's look at the distance between mm, c and d okay c and d the distance in this tree is a long distance here and a long distance here so the distance, the amount of evolution that happened between C and D is quite a lot on this tree. Because why the branch lengths are long. Now let's look at C and D in this tree. Look how short these branch lengths are. These branch lengths are telling you that what? The rate of evolution between C and D is actually quite low on this tree. Right? But the rate of evolution between C and D in this tree is actually quite a lot. Okay? And here, it's, a, it's sort of average. You have a long relationship for D, but a short one for C. So it's a sort of a combination of this one and this one, okay? So the branch lengths are of these three different trees are telling you about the rates of evolution between the species, okay? That is what branch lengths are telling you, about the rate of evolution, okay? And you can see clearly here that this trees these trees the rate of evolution between c and d is not the same on these different trees you see that immediately right you see that the, the rates are not the same but what about the relationship between c and d all three trees give the same relationship look at this c and d are bifurcating it's fully resolved it's bifurcating and they have a common ancestor here Okay, they are sister taxa, right? Ancestrally bifurcating is A, then B, then C and D are sister taxa. What about this tree? Exactly the same. 
ancestrally bifurcating is A, then B, C, and D are sister taxa. What about this tree? The same. Ancestrally bifurcating is A, then B, C, and D are sister taxa. Okay? All three are fully resolved. All three tell you the same relationship between A, B, C, and D. All of them. But the branch lengths are different, right? The branch lengths are telling you about how much evolution of each lineage there is. Okay? So, so that is the difference between the branch lengths, which tells you the rate of evolution, and the topology of the tree. The actual relation, the topology of the tree, how the tree is shaped, how, whether it's bifurcating or polytomies or so on. The topology of the tree tells you about the relationships between the individuals in the tree. Okay, and you can see the topology of the tree is actually identical for all three trees. But the rates of evolution, the branch lengths, are different for each tree. Okay, that I would like to leave there. So in the next lecture, we're going to be talking about how to actually construct trees. Okay, and I um, just want to say that you will be examined on this in both tests and in your exam. How to build a tree, how to build phylogenetic trees is a crucial part of ZOO 3649. Okay, and so you cannot expect to go through the whole module without knowing and without answering questions in tests and exams about how to make trees. Okay, so these sections I'm telling you about in these last couple of lectures, plus the ones coming, are extremely important for you to pass this module. All right, I'll leave it there and I will see you for the next lecture.